morning, guys, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to come here and share a few thoughts with you this afternoon. Uh, this is a great forum. I've uh, certainly been energised, and I must say that uh, any forum that involves young people, actually, I, I just really enjoy the, uh, uh, the vibe and the energy that uh, comes from that. I think uh, the vitality you just can't, uh, can't measure. In fact, um, I like kids. I have two of my own. Um, and I think that they've actually taught me more about myself than I know about myself anyway. But uh, I, I certainly get a reaction from them. Uh, I get, mm -hmm. and I also get the rolling of the eyebrows. So um, guys, don't do that today. Otherwise, I might get a bit of a complex. So, uh, but look, my message to you today is similar uh, to that that I do tell my, uh, my own kids. Um, and uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, we're living in sort of quite a demanding world at the moment. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of news, a lot of words around things like uh, um, um, global financial crisis, uh, things like uh, global warming. Uh, you know, we're hearing these uh, terrible stories over in Syria. And, you know, I, I often hear people out there sort of say, why would you want to bring kids in, into the world? Um, then again, if you go back in history, are times all that much different than what we're really facing today. I mean, we've had things like um, Great Depressions. Uh, we've had countries invading other countries. We've had ethnic wars. We've had a greedy fight for power. So are things any different? Uh, I think one thing is different. And that's, I don't think there's been a greater time to be a young person. Uh, that defies what a lot of people are saying. But uh, I think young people now have a greater opportunity than ever before uh, to guide and influence their mates, uh, their country, their communities, and, and, and the future. Um, I think young people now are very empowered to have their say and to get their views across in a very strong, uh, strong way. This current generation, I really do think, is an enlightened one. So my kids keep telling me. Um, I remember those decades, um, many, many decades ago, when I was a teenager as well. Um, I think there were some big issues that were going around at school, though. The issues like, if I got my ear pierced, would I be able to go to school or would I have to take it out before I went to school? Um, if I had long hair, would I get told to cut it? Um, never dared thought having a tat. Have you ever seen those tats? I reckon they're pretty trendy, but um, those tats where they've got whole sort of like verses sort of written over them, all sayings and everything like that. The only tat that I could do was actually a self-made one where I'd write answers to exams that I'd sort of <laughs> roll up a little bit like that. Um, you know, tats back then were sort of considered a bit of rebellion. Now this, they seem to be uh, a form of art, a form of, uh, form of expression. You know, I went to a co-ed school, so they said it was a co-ed school, but the boys had a boys' yard, the girls had a girls' yard. You got the cuts. You guys wouldn't know what the cuts is. We got the cuts if we actually went over onto the girls' yard uh, um, and so on. So it's, uh, it didn't stop us going over to the girls' yard. We still, we, we, we still did. But it was almost as if those bizarre type of um, regulations were put there to stop us thinking about other things. I don't know. Um, as, as I said, it's been a while since I was at school, but I think school's totally different now. You don't get the cuts. Um, and um, I think they were there to stop us about thinking about things that really did matter. Uh, and there are a lot of things that today do matter. And it's not hair, and it's not taps, and it's not piercings. So what are the issues? What are your dreams? What are your visions? And what are you going to do to achieve them? Can you shape the world? And how would you shape it? And can you make a difference? It starts now. And I think that you guys have, the, have a tool that no other generation in history has ever had. And it starts with this thing here, the phone. We've all got one of these. My daughter's got one and she recently presented me with a 4,000 bill. Never use your phone overseas, guys. Um, I'm editor of one of the country's oldest uh, newspapers. You know, in the 1800s, when kings and queens died, when presidents changed, when um, prime ministers were, uh, were, were uh, elected or tossed out of office, it would take literally months for news of that to come across the waters before it could even be published. Now that same sort of information takes seconds, 
or even nanoseconds. That's an in-word that I recently used, nano, um, learnt nano. But I wish I had one of these when I went to school. We weren't even allowed to have a calculator. But, you know, this is your community, isn't it? Um, it's a digital community. It's a social media community. Uh, it's where you surf. It's where you make friends. It's where you build networks. Uh, why, use wisely. It really does empower you. And it's young people who are the early adapters of this um, and even will be early adapters of technology that uh, has, haven't, you know, hasn't even been perceived. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, I, we all refer to the internet. I've still heard people out there call it the interweb. So it's, uh, yeah, some people are still sort of catching on. But I'm going to do something really daft at the moment. It gets me out of speaking for about a minute. But I'm going to go to my smartphone or my iPhone. Um, I'm going to go to clock. I'm going to go to uh, the stopwatch. And I'm going to start it. And I'm going to let it run for 60 seconds. So we're just going to have 60 seconds of silence. And uh, don't have all that much longer to go. And it's not Anzac Day and it's not Remembrance Day, OK? Silence is deafening, isn't it? Not much longer. Countdown is on. Sixty seconds. Do you know in that sixty seconds, on the in the digital sphere, one hundred and sixty-eight million emails were sent just in that time of silence. Twenty-five hours of video was uploaded to YouTube. YouTube now um, has uploaded more than the entire motion. Pic, uh, uh, motion picture industry uploads in a year. Um, there were 694,000 Google search uh, queries. There were 695,000 status updates on Facebook. 510,000 Facebook comments. There were 98,000 tweets. There were 1,500 uh, blog posts in the latest comic series, um, Clark Kent, alias Superman, has left the Daily Planet. He's joined, he started his own online blog. There were 13,000 um, iPhone applications downloaded. So we're all sort of, you know, that's, that's an amazing figure. I, I find that's absolutely amazing. That's what's going up in this great thing up there called the cloud. And this is the thing that uh, young people can use to empower them in a way never before. We're all told about the downside of the internet and how it's an evil thing. You know, when I grew up, I was sent along to a Sunday school and we were actually, well, I wasn't because I wasn't a girl, but the girls were told that Barbies were evil. Uh, but, you know, now, of course, we're being told that, uh, you know, the internet's evil. But can you imagine that mighty tool, how we can actually use it to harness for good if we wanted to? Um, could we use this and our social media to put an end to things like discrimination, bullying, racism, sexism, homophobia, social injustice? Could we even use it to put an end to war? You know, this and what's said on here in Twitter sphere, uh, on Facebook and many other sites and many other sites to come is something that governments today are monitoring. Not who's saying what, but they're monitoring public opinion. You know, uh, you only have to look at how Barack Obama himself uses Twitter. Um, and there's been some Australian politicians too who have been very, very busy in that space. Of course, Kevin Rudd, uh, former Prime Minister, um, who wanted to become Prime Minister again, and I'm sure who still wants to become Prime Minister. But guys, what I'm saying here is you have a voice. You are your own publisher. Uh, you can um, put your opinion out stronger than any other youthful generation before you. 
And are you too young to do it? And are you too young to be heard? I don't think so. You heard earlier, I've got about 36 years experience. I like to think that I'm pretty good at my job. But, you know, I've worked with people before who have used, you know, the fact that they've had 20 years experience or 30 years experience. Well, doing the same thing for 30 years doesn't mean that you're good at it. Repetition is not experience. Um, you know, there's... Uh, what you do now lays the groundwork for what you're going to be able to do in the future. Have a look at the guys who created Facebook. You know, did they have experience? They had an idea. And an idea that experience itself could actually provide. They were just bright young guys living in a modern world with an emerging um, digital industry. And it took older guys a fair bit of time to catch on. And as I said before, a lot are still trying to catch on. You know, being youthful can be a great thing. Alexander the Great, I'm sure you've heard all about him, uh, was 20 when he became king. Henry VIII, one of my favourite uh, characters in history, was 16 when he became king. You know the ice block? You call them icy poles, I don't know what you call them now. The ones on a stick. They were actually invented by an 11 year old, that whole concept. You know, earmuffs for factories, were, were, you know, today we've got all these occupational health and safety issues. Earmuffs for factories uh, were invented in the 1800s by a, uh, four to, uh, by a 15 year old. It was from the age of 18, Alexander Graham Bell started on his own journey to try and uh, transmit voice in the forerunner to what became this, the old chunky uh, telephone. So guys, the world is calling for innovators. The world is calling uh, uh, for, uh, for entrepreneurs. And the world is calling for a new breed of leaders because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that don't like our leaders at the moment. So it's, uh, but more than anything, they're calling for that innovation and they're calling for um, uh, great ideas and people sort of ready to sort of seize hold of the future. You look around and wonder where, where you're going to get it. You're not going to get it from guys of 20 years experience, 30 years experience and so on. They're going to get it from you. So that's what I just want to leave you, leave you with just one message. Your time is now. Seize your time. Make a difference. You've got a wonderful world out there. Thank you.